just thought I didn't do enough horror content on my channel for the horror nerd that I am. Like, I always do, like, movie reviews, trailer reactions, and only sometimes you get, like, horror trailer reactions and horror reviews. I know I've reviewed some horror movies in the past, like Curse of Chucky and the new Netflix uh, original film, Cam and the Ritual. And, yeah, I... I've, I've definitely done horror related content on my channel, but I just don't do it as much as I would like to, if that makes sense. Because, I mean, I am a big horror fan. Why do you think I made The Stalker? Huge slasher fan here. Love The Nightmare on Elm Street. Love Friday the 13th. I love Hellraiser. Uh, I love all different kinds of horror. And I thought, to really get back into this whole horror theme of content, I would like to just go through all my horror movies, which is just to add just... Yeah, geez, let me adjust this seat right here. I also have this awesome Beware song, which I actually made. I love the black texture that I did with it. It looks very creepy. I love it. But yeah, just let me, uh, just let me adjust my chair and I'll show you. So yeah, this whole shelf right here, the bottom, no, geez, let me just, this whole shelf right here is home movies. These are all my home movies right here. And I'm, uh, and I'm gonna break down each and every one of them, maybe talk a little bit about my backstory, my history of watching them, which one's my favourite, which one's my least favourite, and all that. I decided I wanna kind of do like, um, I wanna break down my home movie collection, or we'll do a, like a home movie DVD unboxing video, and this is yeah, my whole, uh, that's my whole shelf down there, so there's kind of like home movies, stacked on top of home movies, stacked on top of home movies and all that. And then the other shelves that you see here is, the top shelf up up there, up 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 there, is superhero you know, Batman, uh, Daredevil, um, X Men, uh, Four Superman, Spider Man, Suicide Squad, Spawn, all of them. See so, yeah, up there is the superhero. Second shelf is just a bunch of like random movies like Mission Impossible, Scott Pilgrim, uh, Matrix. Uh, uh, the Stephen King movies, the Cloverfield movies, there's Cloverfield and Ten Cloverfield Lane, there's, a, uh, there's the uh, Emma Shyamalan movies, Unbreakable, Signs, The Verge, I guess, so, uh, Signs is I guess, kind of a horror movie, it, it's, it's, it's at least an alien themed movie, and Haynes are, are, I guess, a very sci-fi horror thing, or well, I guess creature, so I don't know, I think, let me know down in the comments, do you consider Signs like a, like a horror like sci-fi movie, but I know I really like signs. Uh, this this shelf right here, you know, this one is movie stacked on top of movie stacked on top of movies here. Yeah, this is kind of a bunch of random ones here. It's so like yeah, there's Predators, there's uh the Tomb Raider movies, there's uh King Kong, Terminator. Uh, there's a couple of Asylum movies. Uh, Asylum like the uh, the company that made Sharknado and makes those really like chip rip props. Sometimes I enjoy a couple of their movies. Um, I, I own this piece of shit, Transmorphers. Mm. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, and now we're at the horror section. And so yeah, I'm gonna go through each and every single one of these. So we'll start from the beginning, we'll start with the one at the very beginning. And this is, yeah, I, this is actually my short film, The Stalker. And this DVD, it comes with some downloaded. Uh, I have to keep on adjusting this bloody camera. It comes with some downloaded scenes along with the actual uh, film itself. So this is the two minute one. This, was, this has the two minute one. I do plan to make a DVD on the unrated extended cut because there's tons of commentaries, downloaded scenes. There's a photo gallery of some, with some of my favorite shots in the movie. And yeah, this just comes with the downloaded scenes in the actual movie. It's, it's a must own, must watch. It's on YouTube, check it out. But yeah, that's that's gonna be everybody's collection. Unfortunately, it's kind of like movie limited. You can't really just buy it anyway. You can't actually buy it at all. I should have to convert it for you and yeah. Uh, we have, now we're heading to some Eli Roth movies right here. So we are, we have House with a Clock and its Walls. This is directed by Eli Roth. It has Jack Black, uh, Kate, Blanchett, and the bonus features on this is um, the ancient scenes, gag reel, movie magic, uh, warlocks and witches, TikTok, bringing the book to life, Eli Roth, director's journal, and more. And that's one thing I love about this Eli Roth's DVD. He stacks them with just 
always awesome commentaries. There's just so much to enjoy, and you just and you just can't watch it. You just can't like develop a movie all in one sitting. It takes multiple to uh, watch all these bonus features and watch the actual movie, which I that's one thing I really respect about him is that this guy knows how to make a great DVD and make it worth your money. Like this was I think about nineteen dollars and it's so worth it because it's a very really interesting bonus features on this. And like this is kind of like a, a kids home movie, I guess. It's a kids home movie. It's like for those for the parents that want their kids to really grow up to love horror, this is that kind of movie. But there's definitely some stuff in there that uh, that goes a bit too far for kids, but anyways. And here's one of my favourite Eli Roth movies, Cabin Fever. Um, this is yeah, directed by Eli Roth, produced by Eli Roth, written by Eli Roth. Um, and yeah, the special features that comes with this is an auto comment, uh, auto commentaries. I uh, believe skin the making of Cabin Fever, which is very interesting. The commentaries are very interesting. A popcorn taxi Q and A session with director Eli Roth. Um, then there's a couple of yeah, like animations, rotten fruit trailers, and all that. So yeah, that's the yeah, Cabin Fever, one of my favorites. This is a very like gruesome, it's a very bloody but fun ass movie. This is extremely fun and whenever I go to a river I'm actually afraid to actually go into a river because it's really really every time I go to a river and it's it just I don't know it reflects me on cabin fever. It's yeah this movie is really good. Uh and then the next movie up we uh, we have a truthful daddy extended director's cut which I'm not sure which parts are extended and all that, so yeah, I can't really say that. Uh, the bonus features on this is Game On, the making of Truthful Dead. That's actually very, uh, very interesting. There's a couple of interviews with the cast there, uh, directing, the, directing the, the deaths. That's a pretty cool one as well. And then there's a feature commentary on that. This movie was actually uh, pretty cool. I, I don't know, this movie got a lot of hate, but I, I rather enjoy it. Yeah, it's, I find it's a guilty pleasure. It's, it's kind of like so bad, it's good kind of movie to sit down and watch it and just have fun with it and get ready to think about it that much. That's kind of uh, that kind of truth for there. Okay, so next movie up is we're, we're heading to some creature features now. Next one up is Rogue. Rogue. This is an Australian crocodile movie. Uh, it, I think it's, it's based in the outback. Uh, yeah, this is yeah, this is actually a very terrifying movie. Like whenever I go to lakes, uh, uh, I can just this movie makes me scared crocodiles. Like I never used to be scared of crocodiles, but this one it brings back the fear. Even though I know the um crocodile it's practical effects and there's some CG on it as well. But um yeah, this is yeah, this is like a bit of really great Australian movie. It's very scary. Uh it made me scared to go into the river because I don't even want to look you know, look down in the water and I don't want to see a crocodile underneath me. And I just have that fear of like the ocean if you don't know what's underneath you, especially in lakes, man, I mean, yeah, this movie does its job of scaring your audience, and it does its job, so yeah, good job to this movie, uh, and special features on this is the making of Rogue, this has like, it has multiple documentaries, as one on the music, northern uh, territory effects, and the real Rogue, and a feature, uh, and, a, and a theatrical trailer, so no, and also the making of Rogue, that's actually very interesting. My favorite is probably is is probably I I, I really like the one I really like the one I called uh, of how they make the crocodile the effects one. I really like that one because it's, it's cool how they actually made this crocodile and how they actually made it move and all that. And so like some some of it is CG, some of it is practical, and there's a couple of good uh, interviews with the cast and all that and. Yeah, of, of how they had to do like, do, like, swimming lessons and all that. It's very interesting, this. But, and then at some time, I, I really like the, um, the last one, um, The Real Rogue. That one's also good as well. Uh, so, yeah, that was Rogue. Next one up is one that only came out last year, The Meg. Uh, when I first heard that they were going to make a Meg movie and Eli Roth was going to direct it, and then he dropped out of doing The Meg, and then uh, John Turtop is going to direct it, I was, just, I was like... Yes, like when Eli Roth was well, I was like, man, this guy has a sick twisted brain. He can do some really creative stuff with a Megadon. And yeah, then he quit from the movie and then uh 
and then John Turtle Top, which he's known for like National Treasure and all that. And then make this is actually a pretty fun movie, and they're like, I mean, I was salivating for this movie, I was hyped. Like, this was my number one, like, number one most anticipated movie. Like, like I was always like wondering what's gonna happen, how are they gonna kill this Megalodon? And I just kept on thinking, I could not wait for the first trailer. Like, okay, if you don't know me, I love sharks, okay? I mean, I mean, if I could be any animal in the world, I would be a shark. And yeah, Meg, I mean, I'm a fan of the book. I'm a fan of Steve Rolton. And, and yeah, and, and the tagline of Steve is big shark, big action, big fun. And yeah, the special features of this is that uh, it's chomp on this, the making of the Meg director. And, it, and I won't lie, the making of the Meg, the chomp on this documentary as a special feature. That's actually very interesting. I do like a one week swimming lesson. Like before they started filming it, and yeah, you get to see like the uh, the cast connections and their relationships and how and the CG shark and how they shot these scenes and all that. It's it's a very interesting documentary. You get a, a interview with John Turtletop, the director, and yeah, it's a very uh, very interesting uh, special feature. And then the next one up, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna do this one as a double feature. Yeah, jeez, this is this, this, this one coming out. And that is Jaws. Dun, 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 and Jaws 2, 3, and 4. So I thought this add the whole trilogy of just add Jaws 1 and then add Jaws 2, 3, and 4 to it. And yeah, these uh, bonus, uh, the bonus uh, features on this is a 50 minute of the uh, first Jaws. Is a 50 minute the making of Joy's documentary, downloaded scenes, outtakes, photos, shark trivia game, get out of the water, uh, screensavers, shark world trailers, uh, production notes, cast and filmmakers notes. And yeah, I've, uh, I think I've seen the downloaded scenes. I don't know, but yeah, the making of the Jaws, the documentary, that's very interesting because Steven Spielberg, there were about like three sharks created and I think two of them shut down and then the third shark, because you know, it was based in, in the 70s when CJ was not quite there yet and yeah, there was like three sharks created, two of them shut down in production because they would not function the way they wanted them to in water. It's like very like interesting really backstory for the making of Jaws and how this has become like such a like such a, like such a phenomenon in our world now. It's such yeah. And this movie is actually terrifying. Just that theme alone. Whenever I go to the ocean, I'm always thinking to myself, Dana Dana yeah, that I cannot stop thinking of that thing. That thing is such, it's, it's iconic, man. I mean, yeah. But yeah, Joy is such a great movie. I can watch this like movie twenty four seven and always get something new out of it. And it just never gets old. It's always terrifying. Like, I've seen this movie about ten times in my life. I'm fascinated. It was the first movie I got me fascinated by sharks. And yeah, some of the sequels, Jaws 2 is okay, Jaws 3, interesting concept, Jaws 4, yeah, uh, yeah, to be honest, I, mean, I don't really like Jaws 4, I mean, it it did so much stuff wrong, and for about 90% of that movie, the shark's out of water, which is actually just ridiculous, I'm not sure if that was, that was I'm not sure if that was, that was a purpose to make the shark, like, an out of water beast or something, I don't know. But anyway, I thought I would just add that as the uh, double feature. Next one up is Deep Below Sea. This movie is the tagline on this one is bigger, smarter, faster, meaner. And this is the director of Cliffhanger and uh, Die Hard 2 and it's Deep Below Sea. And the um, special features on this is uh. It's special shark featurettes, uh, uh, donated scenes with uh, with commentary, a theatrical trailer, stills, gallery, and yeah, there's a couple of bonus stuff on this DVD. And yeah, Deep Blue Sea, I, I, I love the whole concept of this, this underwater station, and there's just these people trapped in it, and there's nowhere to go. And I, and I just love that whole, that whole kind of concept of it. And the other tagline that's on the back of the DVD is Your worst fear is about to surface. Love it. And it did put some of this, I know one of the better shark movies as well. This movie it's to me it's actually actually this movie also actually scares me as well. Because there's actually a shot where in the movie um where the uh, where the shark is it's like really he's really close to the man, just I cannot get the like the vision of that shark out of my head. It's just like the whole I think black texture, just like the teeth. Just 
Ugh, I don't know, there's something, there's something about this movie that just scares me for some reason, but anyways, that is the voice. So you might think that I'd get scared by sharks easily, but I'm actually really, I'm actually really fascinated by sharks. So yeah, our next one up is Stephen King's Cell, which is, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's in, it has enjoyment in there for sure, I mean, there are some, I guess, bloody sequences in this, um, it's, it's terribly shot, terribly, there's some scenes that are okay directed, um, yeah, this is, it has such a cool concept, because we live in a world where social media is big, like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, that, they're all a thing, and this movie, it should play with that, it should have just made it interesting and in how much we are attached to our phones, I think just that whole concept, I think it's such an interesting, but it's, it's executed in probably the worst way possible, and just, yeah, Cell, Stephen King Cell. And the next movie up is actually another Stephen King, uh, is another Stephen King adaption, 1408. And this is the, uh, this is the director's cut. And this movie is actually quite terrifying as well. It's, uh, I don't know, there are a couple of scenes I actually sent shivers down my spine in this movie. Um, and the special features on this is uh, Secrets of 1408, the characters, Secrets of 1408, the director, Secrets of 1408, the production design, Secrets of 1408, the physical effects, the unrelated scenes, the director's commentary, and yeah, this movie has John Cusack and Samuel L. Jackson, and Samuel's Cell is, uh, th that movie has John Cusack and Samuel L. Jackson as well. I thought the chemistry in this movie was so good. I thought Samuel L. Jackson, I thought he was a very really creepy character. John Cusack, there are definitely some really creepy scenes in this movie, there's like this one scene where uh, John Cusack's covers, he's looking out the window and on the other side, he's seeing this like other person, he thinks he's seeing like someone who can actually call the cops for him, but it's actually himself, and just thinking about that scene, now yeah, it's giving me just good goosebumps, can you see? Uh, just ugh, that, that scene, it, it always gets me like, I don't know what I found so scary, just some scenes that like really challenge you, the audience, which I think is good. Uh, and then another movie here is um uh is Cave uh, and this is a movie that I bought thought was gonna be good and uh, like I knew nothing about it never saw the trailers didn't even hear of it I just picked it up because I was just like hmm this looks like a cool creature film this might be enjoyable it looks a little bit like a what's the play movie um I cannot quite think of it if I can remember I put the name down it's like the uh, uh, uh the descent. It reminds me of this, I think, I actually think it came out in the same year as the Descent. And yeah, this movie, it really rips off that movie, and it's, it's actually very boring, characters are terrible, script is awful, and the movie's just, like, overall, really, really boring. Ah uh, yeah, script is awful, direction is terrible, characters, acting, everything in this movie is terrible. I, like, I was surprised, like, 4 95 I was just like, wow, it's supposed like a one dollar movie that you buy at, like, Walmart or something. But anyways, the cave. I mean, when you get to, you don't really get to see the creatures, which I guess yeah, that's kind of like a good suspenseful way. But mm, I don't know, man. It's and I don't really enjoy it. I haven't seen it since I actually bought it. Uh, next movie up is Twenty Eight Days Later. I did actually a review on this movie. You can go check that out. And this movie is actually really great. It 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 does a different take on zombies. Because in this movie, like before this movie, in like George A. Romeo's Dad the Den, all that, he's like, oh, I'll get to you, I'll, I'll get to you in an hour, oh, I'm so slow. But in this movie, zombies, like, like but zombies in this, like, the, the, they're pissed, that they're ravenous, and they're running after you. Like, if you see a zombie, there's probably no way of escaping them. Like, they run, like, they have, like, they, they have their run shoes on, and they're running after you. There's no way of escaping the zombies in 28 days there. This was such a thrill of a ride. The characters in this is great. The direction is really great, really shines. And yeah, it's such a very different zombie movie. A must own, must watch each Halloween. I love it. 28 days later. Next movie up. Uh, well, actually, may as well probably... I uh, say these movies as probably as all one franchise, I'm probably going to say, because they, they are really all one movies, is, and that is Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, and Alien 4 uh, Resurrection, which is a slipcover edition. So I'm just going to kind of, kind of talk about each and every single one of these, like, separately. Okay, so we'll start with uh, the first one, Alien, I'll just put them in their order, there we go. 
so yeah, Alien. This is directed by Ridley Scott, and yet yeah, uh, it has Sigourney Weaver in it. And this movie, it's and this is the director's cut, by the way. So there's like there's like there's two discs on it, and the special there's like tons of special features in this. There's production, post production up. There's uh, there's Art of Alien, Art of Alien featurette, uh, for Art of Alien, cuts. like, there's, there's, yeah, there's all the, uh, uh, there's all the special features right there, it's, look at them all, I mean, there's tons of them on there, and yeah, this is, uh, yeah, the director of Gladiator, and yeah, Alien, this movie is, like, instant classic, instant one of my favourites as well, like, it's, it builds such a creepy atmosphere, and I think the marketing first movie was absolutely on point. Just releasing a teaser, just telling you not really what the movie's about, just kind of setting this, just kind of giving you a look, just really hinting at it, just setting the, just setting the tone and all that. I thought that was like a really great idea. I felt like I think the tagline is, uh, the, I think the tagline is being like, when, when you're in space, no one can hear you scream. And I think just that, that tagline is just absolutely brilliant. And yeah, it's like this movie has such builds such creepy atmosphere. The xenomorphs are not overshown, which builds which builds attention and uh, suspense for them. And I think the design of the xenomorph is absolutely fantastic. Acting, so going way up, like bravo, like really, really got the direction. There's so many art style in this. It's very, it's very graphic and disturbing to look at. But yeah, it is one of my favorites and always will be. And now, and now, aliens. This movie. I, I really enjoyed it. I actually saw the first Alien and Aliens in theaters right before uh, right before a Alien Covenant came out. And yeah, this Alien was probably one I got most jump scared in when in theater. Cause when you're in a video in this like dark room, and the movie's just playing and it just there's more loud sound and the music really creeps creeps up on you. Um, but yeah, Aliens. This is the uh, this is the special editions from the director of The Abyss and Terminator Two. Aliens is like the bigger, better sequel to Alien because this one it has a lot more action. It has a it has a mother xenomorph in it this time, and that's like the third act is uh, is Ripley going up against the mother xenomorph, and it has a lot like a lot more action, a lot more explosions. It has some very uh, iconic lines. Game over, man. Game over. And yeah, this movie it's, it's like yeah, this is your yeah, special edition, which comes with like just a ton of special features. Um, it has uh. What, what is this? Uh, James Cameron's introduction to extended version, uh, auto commentary for the extended version by uh, James Cameron. Yeah, it's like it, it, there's tons of special features. I don't, don't want to go through them all because I don't want to, like, you know, like pull up this video with just saying all the special features. You know, but yeah, this movie, I mean, I saw it in theaters and this movie, it was, it's, it's a blast and it's a blast of fun. So yeah, that, that's Aliens. And next one up is Alien 3. And this is the one disc edition. And Alien 3, I, I actually really hate. It's just like the way it's shot, to the way it's directed, it just feels so just dirty and grimy. It's in the grainy, it, just, it feels like it's an unfinished movie. And I just, I know, the acting was not there. The Xenomorph did not look the same. Uh, and there's just so much I hate. It, just, it went so off the rails from the first Alien and Aliens. It just does not feel the same. It's just like the whole tone to the cinematography to the writing. This movie actually had had a really hard time getting off the ground because it was like a a ton a ton of scripts going around, and yeah, it's just like it, it just just like the xenomorph does not act the same, the acting is not the same. It's just yeah, it's I really hate yeah Alien Three. I only 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 to complete the trilogy, but yeah, uh, next one up. Is Alien Resurrection, which this movie it's definitely bad. This one comes with uh, two versions of the film: the theatrical cut and the special edition. Yeah, this is a slip cover. Yeah, just it's hard to come off. Yeah, see, there we go. Yeah, that's a slip cover. And yeah, uh, this is. Uh, it also comes with a um, a DVD and plus digital HD code. And yeah, this movie it's it's okay at its best. It's Definitely has some really just real over. It's real over the top. It's I think Alan Finn Alan Four is where they really went off the rails. I feel like Alan Four. It's certainly not the worst. I think it's. Yeah, I actually don't know really what to think of it. I don't really remember much of it besides the xenomorph in this movie. It looked it, it looks like a deformed dick, but that's about what I remember. What I remember about it and the um 
Alien, whatever it's called, performed Alien, you got sucked into a hole and then it had a very brutal and graphic and just a very funny death for memory. But yeah, they're my thoughts on the uh, on the Alien movies. So let's go on to the next movie, which this is uh, I think a straight to DVD. I'm not sure if it was released in theaters. Which is Alien Hunter. And this has James Spader in it, and the tagline is Earth just got its final warning. And you barely see the alien in this. It's, this movie should be called Boring Hunter because you barely see the alien as an at all. For most of it, the alien is in ice, and that's it. And for most of the time, you're with the characters, but you're with characters that you don't give a shit about. They're boring, they're just talking about stuff that doesn't really matter. It just makes it boring. I mean, this movie felt like dragging for about four hours. That's how boring this movie is. And this was a yeah, straight, I think, DVD movie that has James Spader in it, which is surprising. Uh, ne next one up is, is Predator 2, which is still in its plastic. Which is, yeah, so it's plastic, and this is the newer Predator 2 cover, like the only recently upgrade with, uh, with like the 4K release and the Blu-ray release and the DVD release, which I, I know, I really love this cover of just the Predator with the spoon and all that, it looks like he's with taking over the city and all that. Predator 2, I haven't, I don't think, I, I don't think I've actually seen Predator 2, I've seen like Predators, uh, Predator, which I actually do have in this collection somewhere, actually, I think it's actually on a, another shelf right ready. It's, it's on the shelf above it. Yeah, geez. Yeah. These things are going everywhere here. But yeah, I have the original Predator. No! Get to the chopper! I'm out for the nigga! Yeah, I know. Predator instant classic. I should... Uh, and I'll, uh, I also have Predators in the same shelf. Predators. There we go. So, yeah, I mean, the first Predator, I mean, probably one of my, probably one of my favorite movies, i got to say. But Predator, I don't think I've seen... I've seen Alien vs Predator, I've seen the first Predator, Predators, and then the two Alien vs Predator films, which I'll get to soon when they come around. But yeah, that is Predator 2, I love this new cover, it looks it's so awesome, and just look, and just look at that back, just, that is a gorgeous front cover, I might add, that is just gorgeous. And yeah, I should, it's, it's still in its plastic, I've had it for at least a, a couple of weeks now, probably, and yeah, I've actually, I think I've actually had it for a month, I've still not opened it, so yeah. And the next one up is next one up is Goosebumps season two. This is a um how many discs does this have? It says one, two, three, four. It says four discs and yeah, season two Goosebumps. I, I, I love the books, I have a whole shelf of them. Down down in, in the very uh, bottom you can see the Goosebumps books there. So yeah, but yeah, the Goosebumps TV uh TV series and I really like this. Slappy is really creepy in this. That's his his evil menacing laugh. <laughs> yeah, I, I can do a tell. I can, that's the, probably the best uh, slappy laugh I can do. But yeah, this is a yeah. I don't know. This is actually a really good TV series. Um, yeah, and yeah, I really I, I really like the, I really like that color of the blob and all that. It's really good. It's a really good show. It has some really creepy episodes. It's a show that gives you that gives you chills down your body. Uh, Slap I think is probably one of the most creepiest uh, Goosebumps icons, probably. But yeah. And then this one I'm also going to add as another uh, double feature thing, and that is Underworld and Underworld Evolution. And Underworld I only watched for the first time like the other week, and I know I really it's. It's okay at its best, and I really like the, uh, I, I really, I think it's, it's MA for a reason, because, you know, as well as vampires, so there's going to be definitely, like, a lot of blood, and just, that third act, that's how you do a third act, and, yeah, that's how you do a death in the third act, that gives me up, it was, it was okay, I think, I think the, um, I think the storyline of it was okay, Kate Beckinsale, she has the perfect body for this character, um, the, the fighting was good, the fighting, uh, cinematography was good, um, the, uh, the, the, the makeup was great, and it's just like, there are a lot of things to enjoy in the first movie, uh, the story is good, you know, if I didn't already say that, and Underworld Evolution, which I've actually not yet seen, it looks like it's, it looks like it's a bigger sequel from the, um, back little photos, it looks like it's a bigger sequel, it looks like there's going to be more blood, more violence, more makeup, more kind of everything, and all that and yeah, there's um and the first one comes with yeah, a couple of special features or a, a couple of water commentaries behind scenes featurette on the making uh a storyboard and yeah uh 
in Underworld Evolutionist comes with an audio commentary with bloodlines from script to screen in the making of the movie five additional featurettes perpetrated in, in black music video. And yeah, so yeah, that is Underworld. Actually, the first one should actually yeah. It is his sister. There we go. Okay, next one up is a found footage movie, Apollo 18. This movie, I think it's... Uh, and I, it's very slow. That's one thing you learn about these found footage movies. like some of more activity. They're all slow. And this movie, I thought it had, I thought it, it had, I thought it, I thought it had a good looking moon set. I thought it did. Um, there's some, I guess some, uh, creepy scenes in it. I guess it's very slow. I wouldn't say it's probably one of the best, but I, 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 I rather enjoyed it. It's okay at its best. Um, so you have to start really kind of wrapping this video up. So I have to, I'll have to try and go through all these, these um, movies. And this one I'll add as a free feature thing. Alright, so the first one up is on is I know what you did last summer. Instant classic, instant favorite, right there. And I still know what you did last summer. That's the sequel. Uh, and then there's this free movie collection pack, which comes with I know what you did last summer. I I still know what you did last summer, and I'll always know what you did last summer. And the reason why I bought this is because I couldn't find the third movie at just any store. I could not find it, and I was like, I looked in like JB, Big W, all of them, and they did not have it. So I was like, when I saw this free movie pack, I was like, this is probably my only chance to watch the third movie. So yeah, um, I'm going to start with the first movie, so I know what you did last summer, instant classic, like I said, instant favourite, right there. Uh, I still know what we did last summer, and that is a, um, it's, it's not great, I didn't really like it that much, I mean, it's, it's okay, probably at best. Um, and then I'll always know what we did last summer. This this cost like I think it was like ten bucks or something, ten twenty bucks I think. Or it could have been fifteen, I don't know, or thirteen actually, I don't know exactly. But yeah, I'll always know what we did last summer. That is a I actually really liked that third movie. I thought it has I thought it, I think it has some of the most creative deaths, some of the best locations, like some of the locations is at a pool and yeah, I think that's like I think the pool probably one of the most creepy settings to be at a Especially in the middle of the night, I thought it just had, had some of like the best locations and had some good cinematography in it and had a good third act and went in a different direction too, the first and second movie. Because uh, in this one, the um, the guy, you know, the killer, he's, he's actually kind of like a supernatural figure in the third movie. It's actually, yeah, I, I, I like the direction that they kind of took. And with these sequels, it's, it's uh, taking place at this like, this little island. And I actually kind of like the whole isolation feel of that one. But yeah, back to I know always what we did last summer. I think it's yeah, I think it's the most creative deaths, some of the best locations. And yeah, I think it's better than the better than the second movie. I think the third movie, I think that's one thing with all these I know what I know what you did last summer movies is the uh, creativeness that's in them. Is just uh is how they kill the characters and just just the deaths. Like all it's all shot very graphically and all very brutal. And yeah, and I think yeah, I'll always want to do last time. I think it's better than the second movie. So, yeah, they're my thoughts on those movies. Yeah, okay, so next one up is is I mean that came out last year is The Strangers Play at Night. If uh, if if you uh, if you saw my top ten best home movies of twenty eighteen, I said this was on there because I think this is a great sequel, a satisfying third act. Actually, I won't get into spoilers just in case you haven't seen it, but yeah, satisfying third act. So, uh, great characters, great locations, and just, I think one of the most intense scenes in this movie is actually seen in the third act. I think that's one of the most intense, one of the most, you really feel the character's pain when he's just floating in the water, he's just like, he's like choking and all that. You can really feel, that's the most uncomfortable way to die, it's getting stabbed in the back and then, oh my god, it's, yeah, this movie is really bloody, really fun, great sequel, satisfying third act, and great characters. Um, and and I think another thing I really appreciate about the sequel is, is it's it's more spread out. If you look at the first one, that that comes as like a basic home invasion movie, but for the sequel, it, it's kind of more um, it, it's more it's at a like campground, a camp I guess, a playhouse, funhouse, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, it's more spread out. You get to see more. There's more like locations in it. It's more. Uh, it's more spread out, I guess, and with the first one, there wasn't much to look about with this one. There's, it's kind of a very colourful movie, depends what scene you're watching, and yeah, and I really like The Strangers. Um, I must own DVD, or if you haven't seen it, I must check it out. 
And the next one up is, I uh, thought uh, actually this has to be another free movie thing. And that is Scream. Yeah, man. Who does not own Scream in their home movie collection? I mean, this instant classic, I think, is the best opening to a home movie ever. And yeah, it's just, yeah, it, it's just like a, a great watch. It really, I think, changed the whole genre at the time. It was like, and I think it would hold the like, little directors that, okay, we can make horror movies and make them good, I think. And yeah, I think, yeah, the West Coast direction is the acting, it just, I think, I know, it's, it's, it's just a really ent entertaining watch. And then Scream 2, I, and I think this one was good. I'm not sure if it was this one or the third movie that was had that opening at the movie theater, which one without what I really like that opening. At, it's based at a um, movie theater and all that, and yeah, I think I was number three, I think, or number two. But in number two, I, 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 I also, I also really enjoyed. And then Scraform, also known as Scream Four. This movie, uh, uh, this is probably my favorite in in all the Scream movies, and I really. I, mean, I like the whole style of it. I like how it's kind of more modern, more social media, looks more like more newish. It's based in a more modern world. And uh, Sydney's character, uh, she she's back, and I know, and this time there's more there's more to her character. Like she's wrote a book and all that about her experience with the Kelly and and all that. Um, I think this movie, it's I know, it's, I, I really enjoy. It. I'm just trying to figure out what was the opening to this movie again. Oh yeah, the opening. I think it's probably one of my favorite openings. It's, it's, it's um the opening. It's because in the uh, Scream movies, I think it was, it was first announced in the first Scream movie that there's this movie series in the uh, Scream universe called Stab. And for um, Scream Four, it, it it plays about I think three of the Stab movies like back to back. And you think you're in the actual movie, but you're actually in a Stab movie. And I really kind of like how I really like that that opening. I think it's a very uh, creative way of doing an opening. So yeah, that is Scream. Uh, so yeah, the next movie up, we're almost at the end now, a and the next one up is, uh, is Final Girls, this is kind of like a spoof movie, it's, it's very fun, I like the whole concept of this, of these people, like, the, like, uh, of this people getting sucked into a movie, and now like, they have to live the events of this movie, I kind of really, I really like that, it's, it's very, it's funny in some moments, and yeah, it's an, yeah, on the back it says instant classic. And yeah, and I just feel like the whole concept of these girls getting sucked into to a movie and then they have to live, the, they have to live these events. Uh, and the special features on this thing is a cast and crew commentary, deleted and extended in alternate scenes with uh, optional directors, commentary, visual effects, progressional, real provision animation. So yeah, that's the final girl. Our uh, next movie up. Is I'm gonna kind of make this. I guess I guess a two movie thing, and that is uh, and that is a Nightmare on Elm Street for the Dream Master. This is a very colourful, very I guess karate esque movie, and the, the special features on this one is the jump to a nightmare cast and crew steals uh, uh, a documentary uh, Kruger, Freddy Krueger, hopeless chest. Let's make up uh, the finish line and theatrical trailer, and this and. And I, I always have, a, I always have a good laugh at the um tagline on the back, the most popular cinematic maniac since Darth Vader. And uh, I feel like, and uh, that's just always, and I always think that's just funny. And this one was, I think it was okay for memory. It was not, it was not great. It's something I'll go back and just watch straight away. The first one will always be dear to my heart. The first one just, that's something I think that really defined the whole genre. It's yeah, it's great. The next one up is yeah, Freddy vs. Jason. This movie is another really good movie. I mean, for years people have been wanting to see Freddy and Jason go up against each other, and finally in this movie you get to see the ultimate final. You get to see you get to see the ultimate battle between the two horror icons, Freddy and Jason. And this movie when they when they are fighting, it is it is pretty great. And yeah, and in uh, Freddy vs. Jason, uh, Freddy, uh, Freddy has been forgotten for many years, and he wants to make his like Robert return to Elm Street. And yeah, and Jason, uh, yeah, but whenever they're fighting, it's really cool. It's a really fun movie. So yeah, the next movie, next movie up, I'm, I, I guess I can make it, I guess, a double feature, because these are some really old movies here, and that is Frankenstein, so it was made in like 1931, it was, yep. And Creature from the Black Lagoon, this is actually a very great movie, this one. This is probably one of my favourite black and white movies, and I really enjoy it. I always, always put this in for watch every really now and then, because I don't really enjoy it. And Frankenstein. 
Yeah, next movie up. Next movie up is Van Helsing. This movie is, and I feel like it's kind of copying off a little of, uh, Underworld kind of, but it's kind of based in the whole monster universe. It has the kid Jackman's in this, and and I it was like it was pretty fun. Like it has like Dracula in it, and it was like you know old classic monster uh, monster icons and all that. Uh, she Jackman, he was okay. Kate Beckinsale, can't go wrong with her. She was in Underworld. She knows his kind of roles now, and yeah, she was good. And yeah, I think it was I, it, it was a fun watch. Um, next movie up is an M. Night Shyamalan movie, and that is The Happening. This movie, it's got hated by so many people, but and I really enjoy it. It's a guilty play. I think just the whole, I think, this concept of grass killing people. Like, you ever thought, it's such a messed up idea, but it works for this movie. It's just grass killing people. It's like this chemical that gets to you, makes you commit suicide. I think just like whole thing, I think it's, it's, it, and I always, when I always put, put this in, I always have a fun time with it, Mark Wahlberg, ah, oh, take an interest in science, uh, that, that's, it's such a, a, a funny movie, guilty pleasure if there ever was one, really fun movie, I don't actually hate it, I actually really like this one, I always put it in for, I always put it in for a watch every now and then, and now we're getting on top of a big pile here, because there's movie stacks, of movies here, so you'll go for these ones, Okay, but here we have we have uh, we have the ring, and this and I know I, I, no, the ending to this is really creepy. With that, it's coming out of the TV all, de all deformed. <laughs> That's a very creepy ending. I think the characters in this were, were actually were okay. It's directed well. Uh, it's written well. There's, there's some scenes that are actually directed uh, very very well in this. And yeah, really really enjoy it. Um, the second movie, uh, the, uh, the the second movie, The Ring Two. This was a, uh, I, I've never, I've never seen it, I bought it on DVD, have not yet seen it, I've heard like a lot of like, um, kind of like, critics have hated it, um, just, yeah, reviewers have hated it, and I, I want to check it out, I want to know what, what, what all the hate is about, I, I, I've talked to some people who have actually liked it, so I, I'm wondering where I stand on that movie, but I, I have to check that one out. Uh, the special features on this, uh, on the, uh, on the ring is there's a short film called Rings, which, it was actually made a full length movie. I absolutely hate it. Probably I've not seen a movie that, that has made me give that there has not been a single home movie in my life that hasn't given, given me the restless leg syndrome. I've been that boarding of wanting the movie to end. That's felt like it's dragging on for three hours. Characters direction uh written. It's all just yeah, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. But yeah, there's a rings short film in this making of the rings, don't watch this and much more. And then with uh, and then with the ring two there's the rings. Um, the Haunting of the Ring 2, HBO First Look, The Making of the Ring 2, Down to an Alternate Scenes, uh, from, uh, from Eye to Icon, and yeah, so yeah, they are the two Ring movies. Uh, and then next up is Alien vs Predator. These are, these are two of the most iconic creatures ever, and yeah, Alien vs Predator I think is a really fun movie, to see the, the atmosphere, just like, I think, I think the whole, like, uh, underground location, this is some really well directed well directed scenes in this when they are fighting it is just it's awesome this has this movie is almost the same level as fun as free vs jason just seeing these two creature icons go at it fight to the death like one on one it's just yeah so awesome and the special features on this is audio commentary and ultimate opening version of the film featurette uh the making of alien vs predator scenes um stills gallery so yeah that is alien vs predator and i i think the yeah, the atmosphere just when these two are fighting it's it's so much fun, almost uh, as much fun as um, 30 vs. Jay I'm not sure which movie was released first, but whichever one was released first, so it was like, hmm, maybe we should get our two creature icons to go head to head and fight and all that. And yeah, just, yeah this movie, yeah, it's, it's, it's a blast from beginning till end. It, it has a very kind of, I guess, Jurassic Park ending, like it is like a, this big, I think it was like a big xenomorph at the end or something, it was like, Chasing after the um after our main character it was like kind of like looked like something from like Jurassic Park and all that, but yeah it's completely like it's completely dumb but it knows what it is it plays with what it is and that's why I enjoy it because it's it's just a movie you can just sit back you can throw popcorn in your mouth and just watch it's yeah like I said it's such a fun watch. Uh, the next movie up is Alien vs Predator 2: Requiem the uncut version which is which shows more blood more guts more gore 
you know, I've not seen the uncut version, I've owned it on DVD, I only got, got it like only a couple of uh, days ago, and yeah, this movie, this movie is really, really bad, as in, this movie is like, you can't see a damn thing, it's, it looks like if you turned your, your television brightness down to zero, as in when the action's going down, you can't see a damn thing. Thing. It's like it's like the um the people who lit the sets it's like they don't know how to light sets and yeah you just can't see a damn thing. All you see is for the majority of this movie is just plain blackness. But from from uh what I saw in it, I think the caution designs on the Predator and Alien look really good. There were some good fight scenes in it from what I could clear out. Uh, maybe I'll watch it uncut, maybe the um maybe the lighting in the movie might be better, so yeah. But I, it's it, it's enjoyable in some parts. Like if I was in an endless put up, well, yeah, like for me, I think I I would not skip out this movie. I think there is some enjoyment in it. There are some really gruesome scenes in it, though. So I'm actually curious to know what this uncut edition has in store. Because in uh, this movie, there was like a, there was a xenomorph that popped out of a kid. Um, there's a scene in the third act where I think a xenomorph impregnates a woman, and yeah, it's some really gruesome stuff in this movie. So yeah, they are the ring and the uh, Predator movies. You can get these. Okay, so yeah, we are we're well, onto the last pile of movies here. So yeah, we'll start with the first one, and the first one is a movie I only watched for the first time. I will not first time, but watch this version of the movie the uh, the other day. It's a remake of the I think of the uh, Monster Universe classic, The Wolfman. And yeah, this is the remake of The Wolfman. And it, and it has Benito Del Toro, Anthony Hopkins, and Mo Blunt, Hugo Weaving in it. And this is the extended director's car. I mean, I've seen this movie before. I think I watched it back in like 2012. I did a review on it. It's been a while since I've actually watched this. And I really enjoyed it. I think the CGI looks really great on the werewolf. There's some really bloody scenes. I said the movie was really bloody fun. I'm not lying when I say it. The movie is like when the werewolf, he, when he wolfed out, like there was certainly some really bloody deaths, some some scenes when the wolfman is just chewing, it's just, it's just chewing the flesh out of the person, Re yeah, really fun, really bloody fun this movie, yeah, great action, um, I, I think the story is good, I think Bo, uh, Benua Del Toro, I think he did a good job as a character, so yeah, the wolfman, uh, as far as, right, as, as far as extended, direct cut stuff goes, I don't know which part, which parts are extended, but my favorite shot in the movie is, is, is the scene of just the wolfman looking out at the London Bridge, I think that shot's actually, it's, it's shot to shit, it's, yeah, it just looks gorgeous. So yeah, The Wolfman. So the next movie up is a movie that I actually have not seen. I bought, the other, I bought the other day, and that is Urban Legend. It has Jared Leto in it, and yeah, I've never seen it. Um, I think the concept sounds interesting, and the, uh, and the, um, and the tagline for this is, Get ready to face your worst fears. Yeah, it has, yeah, like I said, Jared Leto. It looks like, it, I think the concept sounds interesting, but I can't say anything about it, but yeah, Urban Legend. Uh, then the last movie up is Virus. This has Jamie Lee Curtis in it, and um, and this is like, I, I don't remember much about it, but I think, I think it was a good watch. I think there was some really, I think the makeup looked good in it from memory. Jamie Lee Curtis, I mean, she, she rocks every horror movie she's in. Uh, the special features on this is the Ghost in the Machine, an original documentary, a feature commentary with director, a feature of deleted scenes, scene selection, trailer, production notes, and cast and crew. And so yeah, they are all my horror movies. Um, I also have a little Freddy Funko Pop right here. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so yeah, let, let me know down in the comments what horror movies do you own in your collection and um, in other movies I've talked about, which which ones are your favourite, which ones are your least favourite, let me know that down in, in the below, let's have a whole conversation down in the comments. So anyways guys, yeah, I, I it's good to be back, I hope I get to do more, some more horror content, I plan to do some uh, horror reviews, I want to do one definitely on Nightmare on Elm Street where I'm like face to face with you guys um, and all that, I want to do one on Texas Chainsaw. Uh, I want to, I, I want to do one on Cabin Fever, Jaws, I want to do, I want to do, uh, I want to review, I want to review, I want to review all the, all the, I know what did last summer movies, because they are some of my favourites, and there's definitely, I have my own opinions on these movies, so, I have my own opinions on all of my movies, um, and I, and I like them for different reasons, why you guys like them, so anyways, 
Uh, so anyways, yeah, if, so you, let's have a whole conversation down in the comments. So yeah, let me, let me know down in the comments. Do any of the horror movies I own, do you own in your collection? And which ones I've talked about, which ones do you like, which ones are your least favourite? Let me know that down in the comment section down below. So anyways, guys, I hope you have a good rest of your afternoon, and I'll see you in the next video.